dedicated to the prophet. Okay, never underestimate the power of love. Never. Alright? Let's go. I ain't no sucker. I learned to exercise my father. That's how I recognize ain't no salvation in hating my brother. That's why I do what I do. That's how I move, how I move. Love versus hate, work through the struggle to push weight. Too much pain and anger in my blood. I had to regulate. Hate move through my veins, go through my heart and leave scrapes. The prophet's teaching me how to love instead of hate. Give instead of take. Elevate, don't degenerate. Let it take for a minute instead of just getting irate. Real, recognize, real from the faith. Therefore, there ain't no way you could destroy what I'm Love can't lose. Love can't lose. Love versus hate, brother, what you gonna choose? What you gonna do? Love can't lose. Love versus hate, man. Love can't lose. Love can't lose. It don't matter what you try to do. Truth can't change. Try to put him on your Roman cross. I bet he'll see his way through. It gotta be a better way. You dudes better choose. If they worship in multiple gods, they ready to lose. Can't heed the words of the messenger, you breaking the rules Better break out of Mecca before you get to breaking, you fools Bringing the words of Allah, this is the breaking news Back in 1928 from 1492 From noble Timothy Drew To you know who, Prophet Ali came Back to save you Back from the black to divine flesh, man, true Now you got Jesus, Buddha, Muhammad, and Confucius Back to help him save you, brother Love can't lose Love can't lose. Love versus hate, brother. What you gonna choose? What you gonna do? Love can't lose. When you reach that fork in the road, what mode you gonna use? Love can't lose. Hatred is overrated. Can't use it to slay the blues. But love can't lose. Islam, boys. Real love. Islam. Love. Islam. 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 Again, rising. Giving praise to Almighty God Allah and honor to his holy and divine prophet, Prophet Noble Drew Ali. The key to this great conspiracy begins with question number 85 of the pamphlet known as Quran Questions for Moorish America. Each question in the Quran questionnaire has a story or history attached. Question number 85 states, name some of the marks that were put upon the Moors of Northwest by the European nations in 1774. The answer states, Negro, black, colored in Ethiopia. Now before we get to 1774, I want you all to realize there was a, a date or a year that precipitated the events of 1774. And to explain that, I'm gonna call forth Sheik, Brother R. Hopkins Bay II. Islam. 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 Islam, or Islam. Islam. I rise and give all praises to Allah, honor to his prophet, noble Dr. Ali. I give honor to my father and my mother, and I give honor to each and every one of you. Islam. 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 And when we talk about 1774, we know there are things that had to lead up to 1774. And one of the major contributors that they put out there for you to believe is that the Boston Tea Party, the intolerable acts, like this was like the last straw. But there was a case, a landmark case in 1772 in England. Now we know England was the mother country. Mm -hmm. These were colonies of England. And in England, this case is called Somerset versus Stewart, mm -hmm. 1772. Now James Somerset was a slave right here in America and his owner was Charles Stewart. And he took his slave to England in 1769 and the slave escaped. And when they got him back, he was going to ship him to Jamaica for punishment for running away. But when he did escape, he got with sympathizers, if you will, that took up his case. And what they were going by, England had a rule saying that 
their air was too pure to have slavery on that land. So if a slave would breathe free air, you had to set them free. Mm -hmm. So that's what they went to court based on. So there was a writ of habeas corpus filed to stop that ship from going to Jamaica to send him there, and he was going to get his day in court. Now the reason why I say this is a landmark case is because that case, news of it, traveled across the Atlantic over here to these colonies because if England is too pure for slavery, then its colonies will be too pure for slavery. So they had to get together mm -hmm. to say, what are we going to do about this? How are we going to have slavery end over here. I mean, that's what the, they built the success of this country off of slavery. So they was not trying to have that landmark case of 1772 right. come over here. So in 1774, that's when they met here at Carpenter's Hall. And you will find out that they didn't meet under a Continental Congress, if you will because what they were doing was conspiring against their motherland, which is treasonous. So they had to call it something else. They couldn't call it a first Continental Congress. They had to call it an Odd Fellows Convention. But I'm gonna let the Grand Sheik take it over from there. But I wish that you all do the research on that landmark case, Somerset versus Stewart. And the Chief Justice was William Murray but his title was Lord Mansville. Please, please look that up. It's very, very vital to what happened here in 1774. Peace. Yay. Yay. Oh. Oh. Islam. 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 On September the 5th, 1774, the Moors were a divided and defeated nation here in North America. On that date, 12 European colonies met here in Philadelphia in this building known as Carpenter's Hall. It was a Masonic convention. Masonic is defined as pertaining to a characteristic of Freemasons or Freemasonry, a secret society with secret passwords, handshakes, and signals and ceremonies with meanings only known to their members. The meaning or convention was originally called the Odd Fellows Convention. The popular name of this convention, according to the European history books, became known as the First Continental Congress. It must be known that these 12 colonies were actually European nations. In 1774, there was no United States of America. That's right. There were 13 separate colonies, each separately chartered and governed. Now, how, would he, how do we get European nations from 13 colonies? Each colony was composed of European nations under, under British rule. The state in which we're currently in, Pennsylvania, was composed of the Dutch, the Germans, and the Swedes. The state of New York was initially called New Netherland. Mm -hmm. That colony was renamed New York after the Duke of York, the future King James II of England. Yeah. These European nations or colonies convened here at Carpenter's Hall in 1774. The First Continental Congress met here at Carpenter's Hall from September the 5th to October 26, 1774, with representatives attending from all colonies except for Georgia. The representatives including Samuel Adams and John Adams of Massachusetts and George Washington and Patrick Henry, Henry of Virginia, famous for saying, give me liberty or give me death. At the meeting of the First Continental Congress, Peyton Randolph was elected president, was actually served as chairman. The two main documents which came out of the meeting of the First Continental Congress was the Declaration and Resolves of the First Continental Congress, which was passed today, October 14, 1774, and also the Articles of Association, which was passed October 20, 1774. At this very meeting, the issue of the justi justification of the enslavement of Moorish inhabitants of the land was discussed and debated. The 12 colonies agreed to strip the Moors of their nationalities and birthrights. This was an act of European psychology. 
The European colonists gave the Moorish population the slave marks of Negro, Black, Colored, Ethiopian, ETC. And the European colonists defined these slave marks as something inferior to the name white. The European colonies defined white as a color of purity, while defining black as representing everything evil. White and black was also used as political statuses. White meant that you were a citizen, black meant that you were not. When the Moorish population accepted the inferior slave marks of Negro black colored ETC, the Moorish inhabitants cut themselves off from the illustrious history of their forefathers, Fact. who were the founders of the first civilization of the old world. That's right. The Moors forefathers did not form the slave marks of Negro, black, and color. These inferior names or identities marked the Moors as an inferior class of beings who were subjected to slavery. The marks or slave names were forever robbed and disqualify Moors from being free persons, free citizens in the true sense of meaning in which the term free person is used in the Articles of Association, the Articles of Confederation, the Declaration of Independence, the Northwest Ordinance of 1787, and our present day Constitution of the United States of America. The strategy or plan or conspiracy of the European was used as follows. If the Moors were ever emancipated or set free in the future, the Moors were, would remain subjugated and dominated by the European race that had the sole authority and the classifying system by way of race, with race incorrectly being distinguished as colors, such as so-called black race, white race, the Moors would unknowingly forfeit their right to true citizenship. The slave classifying system was designed just for that purpose. Through this method, the Moors would not have any rights under the laws governing free national citizens. The Moors known illegally as black people would rob themselves of the precious rights of citizenship by accepting and identifying with the slave marks of Negro, black, and colored. None of those names pertain to a true nation of people. One may wonder why this information on the act of the First Continental Congress stripping the Moors of their identity is not readily known. Well, the records of the meetings of the First Continental Congress are known as the journals of the Continental Congress. These are the records of the daily proceedings of the Congress as kept by the office secretary, Charles Thompson. The journals were printed contemporaneously in different editions and in several subsequent reprint editions. However, none of these editions included the secret journals, which were confidential secret records that were not published until 1821. This complete edition was published by the Library of Congress between 1904 and 1937. So they were available during the contemporary of the Holy Divine Prophet Noble Dr. Ali. Now this is what is published today. The records of the First Continental Congress. If you look at these records, they were blatant, large sections blatantly removed from the original journals, the minutes of this meeting of the First Continental Congress. And you can look this up for yourself. I mean, blatant. Hold up high, most so everybody can see. Turn, turn the page. Flip. Cause they're even larger, larger chunks just, just removed from the record. Well, that's a whole lot of white out. <laughs> redacted. What they call redacted. It was blacked out. Hello. Yeah. All right. Thank you, brother. And if anyone would like copies of this information, just let us know and we'll make sure you get copies of these records. It was reported that George Washington summarized the raging debate on how to perpetuate slavery of the Moors with this statement. If we would agree to take the fezzes and turbans off the Moors' head and remove the sandals from their feet 
and enforce it with severe punishment and also to swear a death oath between ourselves to religiously and faithfully not to allow anyone to teach the Moorish children whom they really were and who their forefathers were and only to allow the Moorish children to be taught that they were truly Negroes, black people, and colored folks. 200 years from today, the Moorish people would not know the nationality nor the national name of their forefathers. That's right. Also, they would not know from which land or from their ancestors that they are descended from. Islam Moors. So we stand here today as a manifest destiny that Almighty God Allah is the best of plans. That's right. Because man plans a plan, and Allah plans a plan, and Allah remains the best of plans. It's Islam Moors. Islam. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna stand in front of the building and take a picture what our flags Moors, showing and prove that Almighty God Allah sent the prophet to resurrect a dead nation of people. Islam Moors. Islam.